Hello, this is Sarah with House Copper and Cookware. I'm gonna do a quick video today on preparing copper cookware for the tinning process. First and foremost, I put copper into the bead blaster. I use two different kinds of media for it. I first use a more abrasive glass media, usually between 60 and 80 grit. And I use that to remove the majority of the remaining tin and any copper oxidation. It does leave a tiny bit of an etching on the copper. So then once I do whatever I've, I've gotten stock for the, the week or the day or the month that I'm planning to prep, then I exchange out the media for something that's a finer grit glass bead. I try and do between 100 and 120 grit for a, to smooth out that surface area before I tin. Then after I finish with the bead blasting box, then I do a muriatic acid wash where I um, want the tin to go just to prep the surface even better, especially because there is always going to be just that minute, minuscule bit of sand, you know, and dust left over from the bead blasting box. I don't wash the muriatic acid off after I put it on, um, after I put it on, I just put the um, copper right on the fire and let it burn off before ask, uh, adding my flux. And then, you know, tin the way I've done in other videos. So that's the long and short of it. I'll kind of show you before and afters of everything so you have visuals, but it's, um, it's pretty set and dry. Oh, and also, if you are done in the bead blast box and you still see that there's chunky pieces of tin, you want to remove that or else the tin's not gonna, the new tin's not gonna stick and you're gonna have like a crappy looking, um, finish tin or it'll flake off a lot easier. You really want a really clean copper surface. So what I do is I use the Dremel tool to remove the chunks of tin that did not come off in the bead blaster. I um, usually use like a really thin attachment, um, like a grinding attachment. I don't know if you can see this, um, but that's what I use. It's not that big. Here's my finger. You know, you can see how small it really is. And that's what it'll do to get off any stubborn chunks that don't come off in the blaster. Um, you can use a grinding wheel if you have the right attachment, um, like on your buffing wheel or something, if you can exchange it out, but you really wanna make sure that you'd have a handle on the pot and you have the right diameter to deal with it. I prefer something that I have more control over myself. Um, so that's the long and short of it. I'll do before and afters. And as always, feel free to um, shout out any more questions or comments below. And thanks for watching. Okay, so now that you have seen the bead blaster and the muriatic acid, a few notes just as an FYI, and I'll put this in the comments below too, but you should have on protective gear when you're working with both of these things. Ideally, even though I wasn't doing it this time, you would have a type of respirator when you're working with bead blasting. I sometimes do use eye protection even though it's all encased. Um, and the same goes for the muriatic acid. 
that was a photo shoot. Um, it will splatter, it can burn, it definitely will ruin your clothes. Even my leather apron gets splattered and discolors. So be aware of that. And um, also, once you're done cleaning with the muriatic acid, if you do not wash it off, it is going to discolor your copper if you leave it on. Um, so if you're not going to start tinning right away, I recommend um, rinsing it off. But um, I tend to leave the copper outside of the bead blaster and I don't put the muriatic acid on until right before I do the tinning process. Um, that's about it in terms of safety. Um, please feel free to send me comments, questions uh, below or at my email. And as always, good luck with your, your copper and thanks for watching.